Welcome back to the shop here at Base Motorsports. Today we're going to go ahead and kick off our new series on upholstery. And we're going to start that with something, a simple project that is recovering an ATV seat. Now what you have here in my hands is from a 2016 Arctic Cat and it's just the simple seat off there. There are no sewing seams so this is one piece of material and on the back side it is just stapled on. Now I'll just quickly give you a closer look at the back side so you can see that there are staples about every inch all the way around the perimeter. Just a little bit of overhang here on the material and then they do run all the way around. So the first thing we need to do with this before we cut material or anything else, we need to take all these staples out so that we can put new staples in their place with new material. Now to hopefully take these staples out efficiently, I went ahead and bought some staple removers from Amazon. Now there's a link down in the video description to these tools, but if you don't want to buy these or if you don't have them, you can use a simple flat blade screwdriver to get these out. Just be cautious, potentially wear gloves if you need to, just don't poke yourself while you're taking the staples out. Now I'm going to go ahead and time myself just to see how long this takes. I'm going to leave it to you. What do you think? 20 minutes, 40 minutes, or 60 minutes? I don't know, but we're going to find out. Okay, so here's now the finished piece. Now if you're going to think to take 20 minutes, 30 minutes, 40 minutes, it took 14 minutes and 30 seconds to get all those staples out and take off that material. Now you can see the material here is definitely worn through. Lots of duct tape and everything else trying to keep it together. The one thing I'll note, on the back side here, some of this tape actually tore the foam. So you can see right here on the edge, it pulled up a little bit of the foam, but not too bad. Lesson learned, don't let it get to that spot or get it that bad before you get it fixed. Now the next piece I'm going to do is I'm going to take the seat, I'm going to set it on a different bench. I'm going to go ahead and get my material and then I'm going to cut out or I'm going to actually mark out what I should say the new material going on. Now I'm gonna go ahead and cut it bigger. I'm gonna give it probably a good two to three inches extra of material. So what I wanna know, being my first time with this, is how this material is going to conform with a little bit of heat, wrap it around. You obviously see it's stretched with some curves down in the back and of course up here at the front at the tips. So I wanna make sure that it's bigger than I need because I can always cut off extra material and I can't always stretch it to fit if I've cut it too small. All right, just to give you a little bit of reference here, what you see before you on the bench, that is one yard of Arctic vinyl. Now it has a little bit of cold protection. It goes down to minus 30 before it cracks, where typical marine vinyl, which has, still has the UV protection, it will only go down to about minus 10. So we get can get down to minus 30. I don't, I'll, don't think I'll be out in the ATV on it but I'm going ahead and use that. Now this vinyl, obviously from front to back, which is down here over there is 36 inches. And from side to side, it is 54 and a half. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and cut this material essentially in half. Those marks there that I've made with a water-based chalk marker is going to be uh, 27. So side to side, you can see it gives me extra clearance. As I come down here, it definitely have extra there. It's going to give me more to pull with to be able to shoot the staples in. And then as I need to, I can trim that. But I'll just show you the bottom here. Definitely is going to have some extra, but there's really no reason for me to have too much or make it too short. I'm just going to go ahead and cut it in half, roll up the other half, leave it, and then we'll get started on stapling. As we start to lay out our material, we want to find where we are going to be the lowest position or have the lowest position on the seat. By starting our anchor point, Basically our starting point, we're going to go ahead and do this crossways a piece and we're going to do it at the lowest point. Now if you don't have a great eye for where it roughly is, you can take a straight edge like this, take just a simple ruler and you can measure along the way to figure out roughly where the deepest spot is or the greatest distance between the foam and your straight edge. Now looking at it, it's going to be somewhere in here. So this is where my starting point is going to be for my material. So as I lay out my material here, I'm going to start it. Of course, I'm going to make sure that I have coverage over every surface all the way around. You can just feel it with your hand. You're going to make sure that you have enough to wrap around the back side, approximately an inch or so. And if it's more, that's just fine because you can cut off the extra. And you want to balance it side to side. 
So it needs to go a little bit this way. That's approximately even between side to side. And then as you can see, this will be our starting point, our low point here. So I'll go ahead and flip this over and add a couple staples here, feeding material down just to get some of the extra out. And then I'll flip it over to this side, niggerest me, and do the same thing. I'm gonna pull it taut and I'm gonna add a few staples. Now make sure our material is gonna be warm. So if you need to, you can use a heat gun, a hair dryer, anything that provides some heat to it. I would suggest, uh, or I would say, don't use anything propane based or butane or anything else. It gets a lot, it gets too hot too fast. So if you use some heat there, a steamer would be fine. Add a little heat to make sure that this is nice and flexible. Otherwise, it tends to bunch because it's cold. And once you have your bid point in there, you're going to start working out from kind of the center going forward and backward. Think of it like if you took a rock and you dropped it in the vinyl pool here, what it will do is it will spread out from the center. So you're going to kind of pick your center line. You're going to work the staples back and forth. You're going to go side to side and just kind of zigzag it across all the way. Now, if you're having trouble with the vinyl sticking down, if it's a real thick piece of vinyl, this is a little thick, you could add a little bit of glue on there. So if you notice there's a little bit of dimples in here while it's still warm, this is because I glued the vinyl down to the foam. Now, one caution to that is that now you've bonded your vinyl to your foam. So if you ever take the vinyl back off, you are more likely to help pull or you will pull that uh, foam up off or tear just be cautious with it you don't need a lot of glue to get it stick down but it's an always an, an easy way to do it uh, some people like it some people don't i'll leave it up to you to decide now as you run your staples down you're going to obviously pull them in from the edge a little bit this is about roughly about a half inch from this edge and you want them to be parallel to this surface the vinyl is going to try to pull back this way and running a staple parallel to it is going to make sure that it has the most strength or restriction so that the staple holds the vinyl. So you're going to run them essentially just like the OEM one was, or in my case it was, and they're just going to be next to each other all the way around. Now as you get around to these corners, you can expect that you're going to have a little bit of bunching because you have more material trying to go in a smaller spot. So go ahead on this extra material that's up here, go ahead and cut yourself about an inch strip just give it a cut, give it a cut, give it a cut, give it a cut. You're going to start probably about two inches before the corner and stop about two inches after the corner. Now what that's going to do is allow you to kind of bunch the material up, pull these bunches to the bottom side away from the visibility of your customer or for yourself. And what that looks like on the back is a perfectly round and make sure you use plenty of heat. Don't forget that heat is your friend when you're doing vinyl work. It will help it to stay soft and pliable and it will also work. Now this is the finished image of it. Nothing to it really. Take your time with it and just make sure your staples are embedded in there. Now if you have trouble with your stapler getting down into hard places, you can always use something like a small mallet here. You can use that to kind of beat in your staples. And I always recommend going back over it, just taking a couple minutes Go back over all the staples, make sure that they're well seated in there because once in a while you'll get one that maybe sticks up a little bit and just go ahead and seat that down. Now just keep in mind, this is gonna take a little time. This may take you an hour to two hours to get this all done. Always remember that heat is your friend. Take your time with the staples. If they have problems, don't be afraid to pull a staple out and readjust. Take your time with it and make sure it works. Now remember your upholstery work is supposed to be as functional as it is fancy. So take your time on it, make sure it works. Don't be afraid to add a couple extra staples here and there because the last thing you want is something that looks great but all the staples pull out because you didn't put enough in. If you have any questions on doing an ATV seat or anything similar to this, go ahead and leave them down in the comment section. Always check the video descriptions for any materials or tools I'm using. That may help you get a jump start on this project. And remember, if this is your first or your fifth or even more, it's always going to be a new experience doing something different because you're always going to be better than next time. So that's it for this time at Basic Motorsports. Kanan's out, and we'll see you next time.